both forms, the centering is exactly the same. And whatever way you center that's comfortable, that works for you, is fine. I just think this is a really easy way to center, or easier, and one that most people find success. No, um, it's that the move uh, really pushes in the clay down here. The move down really centers the top part of the clay. What you're doing is you're pressing on the when you center like this by coning, you are incrementally working on the clay. First you work down here, and then you come up to here, and up, and up, and up, and up. So you're not working on the whole mass of clay all at once. Wow. So it's a lot easier for people who aren't as heavy or strong to center the mass of clay. You can center a really big chunk of clay by coning it, um, and it's much, much more difficult to, to center it directly. Okay, now, if we were going to make a bowl, the centered mass of clay should look something like a mushroom cap, sort of a rounded ball, slightly tucked under at the base. That's the shape that grows most efficiently into a bowl form. It's a paradox and counterintuitive, but a wide out bowl-like form um, grows most easily from a rounded, more upright, narrow form. And a cylinder, which is a tall, narrower form, actually grows easier from a flat, wide out, disc-like form. It seems counterintuitive, but if you think about it, a bowl starts like a flower bud and it blooms out. So a more upright, rounded form makes it easier to get the shape you want without wasting clay down at the bottom because it blooms out in the throat. A cylinder gets narrower and taller, so it's built by being pushed in. Bowls are made with the left hand, the inside hand, sweeping the clay out and up. So it blooms. Cylinders are made all about the outside hand, all about the right hand, pushing the clay in against the braced inside hand. So it squeezes in and up, in and up, in and up. So you have to start wider than you're going to want the piece to be. So this is the shape that grows into a cylinder. Okay? Again, it's a paradox, but it really works. So from here on in, including this, everything that you've done with bowls will be familiar here, but it's reversed. Okay? It's almost exactly the opposite of what you're used to doing with bowls. Okay? So you start with a flat, disc-like form. You get that little start mark. Now, you don't open with your thumbs the way you do with a bowl. You open, you just use a single finger to drive down, drill down. And what you're going to do is you're going to go down deeper than you would with a bowl. You want to leave the bottom of the cylinder. You'll need about, well, the thickness of the, the wall of the cylinder. You want the bottom to be about the same thickness. And then, Finishing that bottom takes a little bit of place, so you want to add a little bit of thickness to that. 
And then, you know, when you wire something off of the wheel head or the bat, you always end up leaving a tiny little bit of place stuck to the bat. So you want to add that on so you don't cut through the box. But you don't, you, a cylinder is finished in the throwing, unlike a bowl. A bowl, the throwing is just the first half of the two-step process where you make the bowl and then you cut the foot. With a cylinder, it's finished on the wheel. You never go back on the wheel to cut the bottom of a cylinder, okay? Um, there's a little bit of finishing that I'll show you next week on the bottom of a cylinder, but it, does, it, it doesn't go back on the wheel, okay? So, the way you open this guy is, um, you can do like a single thumb or a finger, but to get into the habit, it's really good. It's really easiest for really big cylinders to use the left hand as a brace. It's almost like shooting pool where you use the left hand as a bridge. You put the left hand right here with this gap between your hand and your thumb right over that little hole and you use that as your brace to just take a finger and just stick it right down and just drill straight down. Because how far do you go? You measure. What you do is you go down kind of what you think but not really that close. Um, and then you take your pin tool and you just poke it straight down through the bottom, run a fingertip down until you're touching the bottom and come out and that's how thick it is. Now that's way too thick, okay? We want the bottom to be about like that. Yeah, about half that. Because we want it to be thinner than that but remember, we're gonna lose a little bit when we wire it, and we're gonna lose a little bit as we're flattening and finishing off the bottom. So we wanna go down to about that. Um, maybe, yeah, maybe three-eighths of an inch. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna open this guy up. You open it by literally pulling flat straight back with your left hand, okay? Um, typically, you'll use the tip of your middle finger. You wanna go in that hole, you want to hold your hands almost like a little hook because you want the pressure to be at the base of the finger, not on the side of the finger. You don't want to pull this wall back, you want to pull the floor back. Mm -hmm. If you pull the floor back, the wall will come along for the right. If you try and pull the whole wall, it ends up taking more pressure than it really needs to. So, put some water in there. The middle finger goes in like that. As soon as the hole gets a little bit more open, you can put your other fingers in there to support it. Okay? And you're going to pull flat back. The right hand goes right behind the left hand like this, and it helps. It's like almost like rowing. You're going to just pull the flat back. A really big cylinder takes a lot of pressure. Huh? The other thing is you want to rest the side, lightly rest the side of your pinky finger of the right hand right on that edge. As you pull it back, that right edge is going to come up. You want it to come up, but you don't want to come it coming up like paper thin and out of control. Right? So just lightly resting your edge of your right hand right on that little rim there as it comes back up. keeps that rim compressed. It's like a continuous rim compression as you can Okay, and it looks like this. Okay, so we go in, we're gonna pull absolutely flat back, helping with the right hand. Just opening that guy up. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is flatten and compress and smooth out the inside core. Just using a pad in your fingers, you can move from the outside into the center, from the center outside. I like to finish going from the outside into the center because that kind of undoes the tension that we put in as we ripped it open. Okay? So and then how do you know if you've gone too deep at this point? If it's flattening out the bottom? Um, just feel. Just feel. If you want, you can test it with a pin tool and then recompress it because compressing it will fill whatever little hole you've made with the pin tool. Okay? <coughs> Take your time, finish the bottom. Okay? Compress the rim.
When in doubt, compress the rib. Okay, so the bottom is finished. You really need to finish the bottom now because once you've made the piece, it's very difficult to get down to the bottom and do anything of use down at the bottom. Okay. You won't, yeah, you won't fit in or you won't be able to get any real pressure on it. So you need to finish the bottom right now. Okay, so now, um, and you'll see people do this any number of different ways. Where you want to end up here is you want to take this and set it up so the form ends up looking like a little nuclear power plant cooling tower. That's the shape that is most easily lifted into a cylinder. It's the strongest shape to lift the cylinder. So what you want to do is get it into that little shape. And you'll see different people go about it slightly differently. I like to break it up so that people can see what's going on into three steps. If you watch it on you know, any kind of other demo, it looks like just one blink of an eye step. But if you think about it as three separate steps, it's a lot easier to manage. Okay, so is to collar the rim. You want the rim significantly narrower than the bottom. Okay, so we're just going to collar the rim. Collar it just by squeezing in on the rim. Spread four fingers around it and just squeeze in on the rim to make it narrow. With a really big cylinder, sometimes it's hard to get your hand evenly spread around the cylinder. So the easy way is to use the base of your thumb on both sides. Just put your, you know, right there and there, right on the rim on two sides and just squeeze in with the heel of your hand. Okay, that works. Okay, so that's the first move is to get the, the, the rim narrower. The second move is to flatten this wall. You use the right hand in standard throwing position, but instead of using the knuckle to actually lift the clay, you just put the knuckle on the wheel head or the bat and you use the side of your hand to sort of hinge on that knuckle and just rotate your hand over like that to use the side of your hand just to flatten that wall over. If you do this exuberantly, sometimes what happens is you close up the inside bottom corner. So to keep that from happening, you take your left hand and you just stick a finger down there. You don't do anything with that finger or that hand. It's just there to block the outside hand from squishing close that corner. So we just go down on the bat and we just lean this guy over using the side of Okay? move is very similar to the little claw throw that you do with the bowl just to even out the walls and to get the shape going but it's exactly the reverse instead of the pressure being on the fingers pinching out against the thumb and pulling back in a bowl like curve to even out the walls before you start making the bowl here the pressure is all on the thumb the outside thumb pushing in against the inside fingers and then you're going in a curve like this, kind of away from sort of the reverse curve, okay? So this is like almost like a little reverse claw throw from the bowl. So again, it happens right in front of you, thumb on the outside, fingers on the inside, and you just push with the thumb, and you go in a curve away from you, and up. So it's that kind of a curve. Okay. Compress the rim. All when in doubt, compress the rim. Okay. Now almost never, never is a bad idea. Okay. So this is the basic shape that will lift into a silk. Okay. That little tipped in cone shape nuclear power plant cooling tower. Okay. Now ready to throw. Cylinders are thrown with the pressure from the outside, not the inside. It's the reverse of a bowl. So you're going to use your hands in the same position. You're going to knuckle from the outside. You're going to use a fingertip braced on the inside. But the inside is now the anvil. Instead of the inside being the hammer doing the work, the hammer is on the outside. You know, the outside hand pushes in against the anvil, the braced inside hand. And that will squeeze the clay against the inside hand and the clay will rise up. Okay? So, 
it looks like this. The amount of pressure right here at the back, at the wheel head, very strong. I mean, really strong. As soon as you start up and you break loose from the floor, you're above the floor, pushing against the inside hand, you have to back down the pressure a little, actually quite a bit. And then as you're coming up, you let up the pressure bit by bit by bit by bit all the way up. But you start super strong, back down, and then back off all the way up. Okay? What happens is the base gets smaller, it all gets taller, and the top gets wider. And it looks like this. So, you kind of knuckle in, push hard. Just lift that clay up, relaxing the pressure a little bit as you're coming up. Racing with the inside hand. The inside hand is actually slightly above the outside hand when you're throwing a cylinder. Okay, now, after every pull, I mean, this is not going to require a lot of correction, but after every pull, since the top is glued out and the base has gotten narrower, you want to return it to its slightly tipped in nuclear power plant cooling tower shape. So typically after every pull, you'll compress the rim and then you'll collar the rim just to bring it in a little narrower and then you'll drop down to the bottom and you'll start lightly but as you come up you'll add some pressure and you'll collar the whole form back into its little tipped in form. So that's collaring, collaring. as opposed to pulling. Yeah, so okay. you're just going to collar this guy in. Okay. And then we're going to do another pull. So every time, and what happens is the collaring, anytime you're putting pressure on the clay toward the center axis of the spinning wheel, it tends to recenter the clay. So if you've knocked yourself off a little bit, when you collar it, it'll bring you back on set. And you pull, brace with the inside hand, knuckle in hard at the base. You get that, you see that bulge of mm -hmm. clay? Yeah, I just want to move up. And we just pull that bulge of clay all the way up to the top, letting up the pressure a little bit by little bit as we go on up. Just going to get all the water out of the bottom. You can do it just with your hand and a regular sponge, but sometimes it's a little easier. Yeah, it's a little easier. Hands too big. It doesn't matter how expert you are at throwing a cylinder, there's always a little tiny bit of a skirt of clay right down here at the bottom of the cylinder. Um, the better you get, the less is going to be left there, but there's always something down there. Okay? Um, you don't have to leave it now. Cylinders are different from bowls. With a bowl, you need that excess support clay to hold up the walls. Um, with a cylinder, once it's thrown, 
you don't need that support clay anymore. So we can cut all and trim, wet trim, all of the excess clay off of the cylinder right at it. And you hold it far enough up the knife so that you can get the flat of the tool with the point pointing down right on the wall. So you just lay the tool right on the wall of the pot. And you use the wall itself as a guide and you just gently push the tip of the tool all the way down to the back, cutting off that excess clay. Okay. Then you can, there are ways of just trimming that off, but a really easy, cool way of doing it is you take your wooden knife, you use that just as a guide, you dribble some water on it, run it off the tip of the tool into that little groove that you've cut. You take a pin tool, go in flat underneath that little cut off scrap of clay and then the water will flow out underneath it and when you cut through that scrap of clay it just pulls right away from the pot okay so um, I'm just gonna I'm gonna make this into a little mug um, I like tanker shaped mugs so I'm more or less going to leave this guy alone but I'll probably put a tiny little belly in it down here so I'm gonna just use a rib to rib the outside of this to smooth it and make small adjustments in the shape. What you do is you use your inside hand, just the side of it or a fingertip, just to support the inside and then you use your rib on the outside. Remember a rib is a wiping tool, it's not a cutting tool or a scraping tool, so you use it as at a really extreme angle like this. So I'm just going to go in, support the inside of this pot and then just make minor little adjustments of the outside. sharpen this edge so it's not too sharp but it gives the illusion of the rim being thinner and a thin rim feels good against your lip 